G'day, I'm Rob from Expedition Kayaks and I'm here this afternoon to talk to you about the EK electric bilge pump kit. We've avoided talking about this in the past because of all the DIY products we've got, it's probably the hardest to describe. It's also really quite boring, so I'm going to get through it as quick as I can. Before I discuss the pump itself, the thing you need to realise about electric pumps is whilst they're really nice to have and when you press that button and you actually hear the noise of the pump working and the water starts to come out the side of the boat and you really want to get the water out, then it's a, it's a great relief. But although it's nice to have, if you actually need to be in a situation where you need to get the water out of the boat for any reason, especially for safety reasons, then this is actually going to be more reliable than any electric pump available. The harsh conditions that the electric pumps are used in, the exposure of the wiring and other connections inside the day hatch, the vulnerability of the pump relative to the environment that it's working in means that it's not an inherently 100% reliable uh, piece of equipment. Just as a bit of a test, my regular paddling group, some very experienced and distinguished sea kayakers there, people who've done lots of really good trips, they, uh, I, I do a little survey of them, just a bit of an equipment check before we go out some weeks, in fact most weeks, and the product that consistently is not working for these people, isn't their tow lines or their radios or anything else, it tends to be their bilge pumps. So whenever we leave or before we leave, especially if conditions are pretty harsh, we always make sure we have plenty of these in the group as well. Having said that, as I said before, when you press the button and everything goes well, nothing beats it as a way of getting yourself back into a good position to keep going. So let's start with a brand new sea kayak, a brand new Audax Expedition kayak that's been uh, fully fitted out with one of our electric pumps. So here you have the switch, which is a small, small mechanical switch. It's a latching on off switch with a push button top, a little bit like the sort of um, shutter button that you get on a waterproof camera. Then you've got the battery, which is in here in a bracket. There's a fuse in here, which we'll see some images of in a little while. On this side of the bulkhead, there's the pump itself, which is a very reliable rule, 500 gallon per hour pump. Then we've got an outlet hose, which runs from here, down to an outlet on the side of the boat over here. So that's, when it's properly installed and fully installed, the only thing that makes it obvious that you've actually got an electric pump fitted is you have an outlet point on the side of the boat, just above the gunnel and just on the deck somewhere forward of where you're sitting is an ideal position in this particular boat. Every boat will have some different requirements there. The switch needs to be somewhere that's easy for you to get access to, but not too vulnerable to being hit because mechanical damage with these switches is one of the biggest problems with keeping them reliable. At the heart of the whole system is this lithium ion battery. It's in a water sealed container. It has a watertight gland on the side that contains the cable. So everything inside here is sealed off from the environment. Now, this battery makes a huge difference to the viability of this whole system. Without this battery, we were always confined by using small sealed lead acid batteries with very low powers, big weights, and we needed to put them in a sealed otter box in order to make them workable. What we can do with this is we can just fit this straight in the day hatch. And what we tend to do is we fit it with this bracket here. And this bracket then completely isolates any, any movement. It keeps the battery nice and secure inside the day hatch and it allows it to be removed if you need to remove it in order to charge it. So the bracket's very light, the bracket's made of anodized aluminium, it's only one, one and a half millimetres thick, and it's extremely lightweight but very strong. You can see this easily hooks together and you can actually do that with one hand inside the, the day hatch. The holes on the other side of the bracket conveniently actually are lined up so that they'll match exactly with the pump bracket which we supply which comes from Rule and fits their Rule 500 gallon per hour pump. When you need to fit the pump, you just simply sit the bracket for the pump and the strainer 
that goes underneath it, you fit those inside the cockpit sitting against the floor. And the hole spacing through the bracket then gives you exactly the right hole spacing for this bracket on the other side of the bulkhead, including keeping it a safe spacing off the floor of the boat to keep it out of any moisture or water that tends to get gather in the bottom of the hull. So those two parts work very well together and make installation as easy as possible. Here we've got the hull harness system. This starts with the battery directly behind the bulkhead, which will be in the bracket. That then runs into this harness through to the switch and from the other end of this it supplies power to the pump via this fused connection here, this fused pigtail. So if you look at each of these parts, they're actually removable. Each of them actually comes apart and this means you can troubleshoot. It also means when you're assembling it in your bulkheads you can do it and it also means that if any one part gives you problems or needs servicing, you're able to take it apart. So you've got your, your little switch here, which has a waterproof membrane inside the, the back of the button. You've got all of the, the um, washers here, which protect and seal the day hatch from the hole that's put through the boat for the switch. This is all sealed in the back. And then you have your O-ring connection switch goes to the harness, harness goes to the battery, other branch of the harness goes to the fuse, which is this one here, and then there are only two wires left for you to connect that require any sort of crimping or soldering at all. The, the entire kit comes with a set of heat shrinking crimp connectors to make this one connection. It's the only electrical connection you're required to make that hasn't been prepared for you. The other nice thing about it is even this little fuse here, the fuse itself, the fuse holder has another one of those O-rings in it. So you're well and truly, well and truly protected. You're not having to do lots and lots of connections. And each part in this entire chain can be changed out you can leave different parts out in order to troubleshoot which is the offending part if something isn't quite working for you. And the best part about it is the serviceability of simply being able to change the switch. I'd, I'd like for people to think that the switch is a little bit like tyres on your car. This is something that you have a good look at when it starts to look a little bit worn or a little bit beaten up. Or if you have any doubts about it, whatever, or even just simply as a routine a routine check or, or service that you can just simply unscrew this from your harness, undo the nut that holds it to the deck, pull the whole system out and drop a new switch in. So that's, the, that's one of the elegant simplicities of this system. No more reliable than some of our previous systems, but far more serviceable. I think you'd all agree nobody likes drilling holes in their kayak. One of the most important things when you do drill holes in the kayak is to make sure that you only have to drill them once and that the fittings that you're putting in there are going to last a good long time and do the job they're designed to do. So we use this little fitting here which allows you to get a good right angle turn and keep the fitting very snug against the side of the boat. You can get the, the side of the boat really close against the fitting here. Trim, it, trim the rest of the thread off as you need to. So it's a very versatile fitting, one that also has a good, good diameter dress ring around it. This area here does allow a little bit of a fudge factor. Although you want this to be as tight as possible, there is some room there for some sealant if you, uh, if you don't get it 100% right. The hose that we provide with the kit is a crush proof hose and that uh, self-explanatory why you'd want it to be crush proof. The, other, the only other holes that you've really got to sweat about is the one that takes the wires from the pump through the bulkhead to connect to the harness that we were just looking at before. So for this we have a little waterproof gland that's designed to screw into the side of the bulkhead here. It has a rubberized seal on the other side. You screw that down against the bulkhead and then once you've got it in place this end here tightens down on the wires and keeps the water out. 
The other one, of course, is the switch, which we've already looked at as part of the harness, but it's also well set up in terms of uh, neoprene washer, nylon washer, little O-ring that sits around the back of the switch. If you've stuck with me this long, it's probably because you know what it's like. You've been there, you know how hard it is to get that water out of the boat sometimes, especially when you really need to. When we've done lots and lots of rescues over the years, one of the things that always happens when you come across somebody in the water that's part of your group hanging onto their boat and things are really rough and you'd like to get things moving again. You've got a group to deal with, you've got situations close to rocks or whatever it might be. You see that switch on the deck. The first question you ask as you're getting into position and you're finding out why on earth they fell in in the first place is you ask them whether the switch works. And the smiles all round when you see that water start to come out the side of the boat and you know that you've changed the whole nature of the rescue. Suddenly you can cut out a whole bunch of steps. That person will be back in the boat quicker with one less problem to deal with. Anybody who's been in a situation where they've actually had to use one of these, where it's been their only option, will understand or at least remember just how much hard work this can really be. How much extra effort, how much extra time is involved in removing the water using one of these. That's also extra energy that you could be expending on getting yourself into a better situation. I always think that it's experiences with pumps like this that probably led people to start thinking about solutions like the electric bilge pump in the first place. So this kit is $395 contains all of the componentry that you've seen me going through this afternoon and explaining how it all works together. But also, if you're a DIY enthusiast and you have your own ideas how to make all of this work, almost all of the componentry that you see here this afternoon can be purchased as separate items and they're all available on our website. Not a, not a